Hi, this is Dr. John Burgoff. In this video, we're going to explore problem solving again. Uh, problem solving is that general idea of encountering a problem that you've never seen before that doesn't fit into a formula or an algorithm that you already know, and you're having to come up with your own approach. Um, Georg Polya is famous for suggesting a, a long list of possible strategies that you can use uh, if you encounter something new and you don't know how to solve it. One of those strategies is making an orderly list. And I want to show you an example of how you might use that technique. So suppose you have a drawer full of lots of $1, $5, $10, and $20 bills, basically as many as you need, so there's no restrictions. In how many ways can you make a total of $21? Now, this definitely doesn't fit any formula or algorithm or anything like that that you would already have seen. And your initial response might just be to sort of cast about and kind of come up with different examples sort of willy-nilly, like, uh, well, I don't know, you could have four or $5 bills and a one, uh, or maybe uh, a $10 bill and a $5 bill and six ones, and, you know, come up with a, a number of items. But if you do that in sort of a disorderly way, you're not really sure if you've hit everything. So coming up with an orderly list might be better. And here's a way, a way, not certainly not the only way, a way you could do this. Let's, we're going to make a big old chart here where we're going to look at $20 bills, and we're going to look at $10 bills, and we're going to look at $5 bills, and we're going to look at $1 bills. And to get sort of an orderly approach to this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask myself, what is the largest number of so we're going to start with the $20 bills on the top. What's the largest number of $20 bills that I could use if my goal is to create a total of $21? And I think that's a pretty easy question because the only way you could use a 20 and get $21 is if you only use one of them. And having said you've got you're going to use one $20 bill, you can then ask yourself, well, what other bills would I need to do to get up to $21? I wouldn't want to use any $10 bills or any $5 bills, but I could use one, $21, one $1 bill. So what this uh, row of the column represents is you use one $20 bill and one $1 bill, and that would get you to $21. Then what you do is you ask yourself, is there any way, other way that I could use one $20 bill and get a $21 total? And I think pretty quickly you realize that there's not. Once you've exhausted all the possibilities that use one $20 bill, then what you can do is say, okay, in, in that case, I'm going to look at what if I don't have any $20 bills? Then you would move to the next column over, and you could say, what's the largest number of $10 bills that, that, are, that I could use in order to create $21? The largest number of $20, $10 bills. I could use two of those, which would create $20. And if I committed to two $10 bills, I would then not need any $5 bills, but I'd need a $1 bill. And this would be another way, then, of getting $21. Two $10 bills and one $1 bill. And you ask yourself, is there any other way I could use two $10 bills and get a total of $21? And I think you can see there's not. So then you say, well, what if I decrease that by one? So again, using no $20 bills, but what if I use one fewer $10 bills? Is there still a way that I could get to $21? And I think there is. Look at the $5 and, and at each step ask yourself what's the most number of these I can use. Uh, the most number of $5 bills I could use if I've already committed to use one $10 bill would be two of them. So one $10 bill and two $5 bills would again make $20 and require that I have a, another single dollar bill. So this would be another way to get $21, one $10 bill, two $5 bills, and one $1 bill. And then you ask yourself, is there any other way I could use one ten and two fives to get 21? And I don't think so. You don't give up on the possibility of using one $10 bill until you've explored all other options. So what you do is you still say, well, what if I'm using $1 bill, one $10 bill? 
But what if I use one fewer $5 bill? Is that possible? And I think the answer is yes, because if you use uh, a $10 and a $5, you spent 15, you have $15 so far. You don't want to use any more 10s or 5s, but you could go in and get six $1 bills, and that would be another way to get to $21. So we're just trying to be orderly about thinking about the options. And you ask yourself, is there any other way I could use 110 and 15 and still get to 21? And I think the answer is no. So what you then do is you say, okay, I still want to think about one $10 bill, but I want to decrease the number of fives and say, what if I don't use any fives? Can I still get to $21? And remember, your drawer has as many bills as you need. So with one $10 bill, you'd be $11 short, and you could just simply have 11 $1 bills, and that would give you another option, one 10 and 11 ones. Is there any other way you could use 110 and no fives and still get to 21? I don't think so. I think that's it. And because I have gotten my number of $5 bills down to zero, I think I have exhausted all possibilities that would result, that would, that would come from using one $10 bill. So we've already figured out that we've done everything we can using one $20 bill. So we're not going to use any of those. And we've also thought through every possible way of using two $10 bills or one $10 bills. So let's go down and think about, well, what if I don't use any $10 bills? Can I still get to $21? So I have, don't have anything right now. As you move to the five column, think about what's the most number of fives that I could use. If I used four of them, that would get me to $20, and I would just need one more from the one from the $1 column, and then that would be another option. And you ask yourself, is there any other way I could use no 20s, no 10s, and four fives and still get to 21? And then at that point, I think you're, you're kind of stuck. So you say, well, I'm, I'm not using any 20s and I'm not using any 10s, but what if I used one fewer five? What if I only used three fives? Is there still a way to get up to $21? Well, three fives would make $15. So you could use six $1 bills and that would get you there. Is there any other way to use three $5 bills and get to 21? I don't think so. So what you do is you say, okay, I'm using no 20s and no 10s, but what if I used one fewer five? What if I went down on the number of fives to two? That would mean I've spent, I've got $10 so far. Could I still get to 21? Yeah, I could. I could get 11 ones and still get to $21. That would be uh, two times five is 10 plus 11 is 21. Is there any other way I could use just two $5 bills and get to $21? I don't think so. So let's decrease, let's keep these at zero, but decrease the number of $5 bills down to one. So I only have $5. Could I get to $21? I'd need a lot of them. I could get, get there if I use 16. And that would give me $21. Well, I think I've utilized every possibility with no $20 bills, no $10 bills, and only one $5 bill. Let's knock the number of $5 bills down again, all the way to zero. Could I get to 21? Yep, I would just have to use 21 $1 bills. And since I've now thought through every possible option, I think of from the maximum to the minimum number of $20 bills, $10 bills, and $5 bills, I think we have encountered every possible way to create $21. And then the, the question was, and how many ways can you do this? Well, we can simply just count. Count how many rows this table has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten different ways that you can create $21 using one, five, ten, and twenty dollar bills. Is this the only way you could draw this chart? Nope. You could start from smallest number of bills and go up. You can start by looking at the $1 bill first. There's lots of different ways even to use an orderly chart. And no one says you have to use an orderly chart. If you think of a different way to do this, that is good also. Um, as long as it is mathematically valid and gets you to the right answer, you should be fine. I hope that helps.